Tennessee is about to be well represented in the NFL draft. We've talked about James Pierce, and we're going to discuss him a little bit more. But other guys that you may not think of as NFL players immediately, the Simmons, the Sampsons of the world, the Peelys of the world, the Eason's of the world, we'll get into those guys as well. Hit that like and subscribe button. We would greatly appreciate that. Four Downs brought to you by Dynasty Pools and Spas. And Cooper, I need you to set us up, buddy. What do people need to do? Cooper Mays here. Hit like and subscribe. Thank you. Coop here. First down. All right, so we all know James Pierce is the best NFL prospect on Tennessee's team, correct? Maybe also the best NFL prospect in the country. PFF has him number one. Right. Football Focus has him the number one prospect in the nation for 2025. Yep. So I saw that, and it's also uh, a week. Uh, it's a week year at quarterbacks, so I think that might help him as well. But let's go ahead and get into it right now. Who's the next best prospect other than Pierce? Coop here. First down. All right, that's first down. Caleb, who you got? Next best prospect. And by the way, we want your input on the message board. So go ahead and tell me what you think. I think it's Brew McCoy. I think it's Brew McCoy, assuming he's healthy. Brew McCoy is a rare, rare physically gifted receiver. Um, and on top of that, he is uh, he shows a willingness to do all the necessary little things. I mean, so he's basically Jawan Jennings, but I think faster, quite honestly. So I think it's easily Brew McCoy. Okay, I'm going to play the other side of it just for the sake of argument and say there has been injury concerns, and I think he's going to be 100% healthy, but he's also older. So I will go with Dylan Sampson, although I think you know how I really feel about Brew. But I'll go with Dylan Sampson uh, just for the sake of argument. How about you on the message board? What down, Coop? Cooper Mays here. Second down. All right. Second down. Who will be the surprise player this fall? The surprise player that will then vault themselves into NFL status. And I'm talking high-tier NFL status. We're not talking about seventh rounders around here. So the surprise player for me <clears throat> is going to be um, a couple of guys are, are 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 already leaders on the team. So I'm going to go with Bryson Eason. He starts a defensive tackle uh, uh, opposite uh, Amari Thomas, and Amari Thomas I think is already kind of, is not really a surprise player because we know what we're getting from what, what Tennessee is getting from him. So I'm going to go Bryson Easton because he start he starts with Amari Thomas and he's been a reliable starter for three years and now with the NFL money on the line I think you might see another lay, another layer for him this year on the defensive line. I don't know if this is a surprise player, but I have a feeling that Amari Thomas could turn himself into a mid round pick and I did not think that when he showed up on campus. So it's a surprise to me over the course of his career. Surprise to you? Amari Thomas, um, see, that's why I would have said him, but I just can't, like, he's kind of in that Cooper Mays tier to me. We're like, Amari Thomas and Cooper Mays are, they are, I mean, don't we kind of expect them to get drafted? Like, Tennessee cobbled up NIL money to keep them going from going into the draft this year. Huh? So, uh, yeah. I, but I get what you're saying. Yeah, I, I just I didn't think he was a great prospect when he when he came in. Not knocking him, I've been proven wrong because he's a starter, SEC worthy, and doing a fantastic job. Just curious. Go ahead and uh, put that poll question up. Uh, who is the next best prospect on Tennessee's football team headed for the NFL? And I think we would go Pierce. Then we would go no next best. Pierce is not the next, next best. best. He is the best. Next best. Yeah. Okay. So you want to go Brew McCoy, and who do you want to add on that list before we get to third down? By the way, I remind you that four downs. Fourth is... down. Oh, are we on fourth? Fourth down yeah. happens fast. It's brought to you by Dynasty Bulls and Spots. 
Experience it all at Ray Varner Ford in Clinton. Need a quick fix or routine maintenance? Visit our Quick Lane Tire and Auto Center. Keep your Ford running smoothly with the experts in our service department. Ready for your next Ford? Our sales team's here to guide you through. 24 Ford Badlands Bronco, 59829. 24 Ford Maverick, all-wheel drive, 28540. 24 Ford Explorer XLT four-wheel drive, 49996. Local you trust? Experience you can afford. Ray Varner Ford, your East Tennessee Ford dealership. I've been an official. I know how to keep down and distance. Caleb doesn't. It was third down. Tennessee center Cooper Mays here. Third down. God, Caleb. Uh, most raw potential. I go first. Elijah Simmons. Uh, how do I Second disagree with guy? you on that? How Is do that, I disagree? You know, you, I don't you know, know. What game? he's just a freaky athlete. We can agree. We get, we like I, each other. Wait, actually, I, I, I'm going to play off you. Um, I'm going to say most raw potential is wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Your guy, Dylan Sampson. Cause I think he's still raw. I think he's okay. still raw. Okay. All right. Uh, let's get to fourth down right now. Brought to you by dynasty pools and spas. Cooper Mays here. Second down. Who can absolutely improve. Second down. Now who doesn't know down in oh, distance. Oh, let's see. Center Cooper Mays here. Fourth down. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, we're right back. It's Colorado. We got to fit down. Um, who has the most to gain this year? Who can go from a seven to a one or not drafted to drafted? Who can make the biggest jump? And I'm not going to let you say Elijah Simmons, and I'm not going to let me say Elijah Simmons. Who can make the biggest jump? Oh, John Campbell Jr. John Campbell Jr. moving over to right tackle with Glenn Ellerby and what he's already done at the right tackle position. I think John Campbell Jr., can easily vault to a very high draft pick. And I think the success of Darnell Wright that you're going to see this year in Chicago is going to make him a more attractive prospect. Yep, absolutely. Guys, I think we're having a little bit of problems with our uh, message board, but go ahead and uh, pile away and we'll get those taken care of. Um, I'm going to go Cooper Mace. And here's the reason I'm saying Coop. He just needs to get through a season healthy. Injuries have been a concern the whole time. If he gets through a season healthy and passes medical, I think he could go from a late round pick to a mid round pick. It just depends if somebody needs a center because much like quarterback, there are only 32 of those starting positions in the NFL. Yes, um, I agree. I just, again, Cooper Mays and Amari Thomas, maybe I'm just like, they're so developed and so reliable. We kind of know where they're going to go. I think we already know they're thir third to fourth rounders. Is that crazy for me to think that like they both will go in the third or fourth round next year? Uh, no, I don't think that's bizarre at all. As, as a matter of fact, do you want to run down the list real quick of guys that we think are going to get drafted? And then you, you can say real quick, um, you can say round, or you can say not drafted. Let's just do that. All right. So take a look at it. All right. So uh, Bruce McCoy drafted, James Pierce drafted, Cooper Mays drafted. Okay. And then you think John Amari Thomas Campbell. drafted. Amari, Amari Thomas, Thomas definitely. Okay. Campbell yep. a definite. I think Campbell and Spragans are both definites. Okay. As far as rounds for those guys, I'm going to go Pierce one, McCoy two, Mays. Three, I didn't mean to do it like this. Omari Thomas would be the fourth. And then I would, one, two, three, four. I would have John Campbell, who would be on my uh, uh, my potential uh, list as well. Um, but I think he's going to be a second round pick, um, given what uh, LRB's been able to do, like you mentioned. Javante Spragans, yeesh. drafted? Yes, yes. Okay, I'll say yes. I'll go uh, sixth round. Okay. Elijah Sim. What about you? What are you having? I actually agree. Sixth round. I'm with you on the sixth round. I'm with you on every single one you named so far. Oh, so it's no good. Elijah, Elijah Simmons. Simmons. Eli okay, you ready for this, Dave? Elijah you go, Simmons will either, you go one to seven. Here's he'll either he will either be a second rounder or he'll be undrafted. Yep, it's one of the two. <laughs> it's one of the two, basically. Uh, Dylan Sampson, I think, goes in the second round. I think he fits what the NFL is all about right now. I want you to address these last three guys. Uh, Keenan Peely, again, it's going to be an agent injury thing. That's going to work against him. So I would say fourth round for Peely. I'm going to say Peely undrafted. Undrafted there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think he's I think he's actually 72 years old. 
And then Bryson Eason. Seventh round. I think he works his way into the seventh round as a surprise pick. Here's where I want to go with this, Dave. You covered the deepest Tennessee football draft class, in case you remember. It was 2002. Mm -hmm. um, wasn't it? John Henderson, Albert Hainsworth, and Dante Stallworth were all top 12 picks, weren't they, that year? Yeah. And it, 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 Tennessee was – it's hard to – really, it's hard to put in perspective if you've been – what you've been through the past 10 years of how talented Tennessee used to be. Yeah, that 02 draft class and the 98 draft class, not the 98 team, the 98 draft class are the players who left before the 98 season. That was a loaded draft class, as was the 2000 draft class. But yeah, 2000, 98, 2000, and 2002 were all just insanely loaded draft classes for Tennessee guys. Go back and look them up. I think this draft class could rival it. Now, here's where I go really crazy, because this is possible, Dave. Is it possible that Tennessee has the number one draft pick in 2025 and 2026, but different position guys? Yes. And I, I thought about that. Are you referring to whom? James Pierce going next year and then Nico Iamaliava going the year after. I thought you might go there. Yeah. I think that's a possibility. I Is think that the quarter would that I think Pro Football Focus's report was very accurate that the quarterbacks this year that are going into the NFL draft in college football are not great. But how many times have we said that in May and they end up pretty good? We didn't even know who Drake May was this time last year. We know this time two years ago. We knew this time last year. Uh, this time two years ago. Sorry. Yeah. That is correct. Um, yeah, that would be, I agree. So that, and Pierce is the most obvious one. That's probably why he's number one right now. And pro football focus does go numbers based. Now here's, but the question would be if it did happen, if Pierce maintains his number one spot, does there have been schools that have had back-to-back -back number one draft picks. That's not crazy. I think Oklahoma just recently did it with like Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray. But has anybody had back-to-back -back number one draft picks at different positions in history? Like, could Tennessee be on just, the verge of history? I would have to imagine not. Like, that's insane, right? I mean, <laughs> like if surely not. I mean, I, I'm I'm even surprised that it's happened back-to-back -back years. Are you sure that it's happened back-to-back -back years? Would that be? Um, I'm pretty sure that baker mayfield and kyler murray went number one back-to-back -back years uh baker mayfield went number one in 2018 kyler murray went number one in 2019 yeah both out of oklahoma both won the heisman too for oklahoma so that was when lincoln riley's you know he took over at oklahoma and he would just get a quarterback for a year that was good and put up gaudy stats against the big 12 defenses and then they get blown out in the playoff remember yeah uh Dylan says Pierce won't go first. Uh, just off need of quarterbacks. You're right. That's an overvalued position. But if there's one that's second, it's the pass rushing defensive end, edge rusher, right? Yes. Yes. So I uh, think there's I think there's a real possibility. I think a quarterback will end up uh, cl climbing the rankings eventually. It just it's hard for me to imagine a quarterback not going number one as important as uh, that as that position is. It. It is um, it is the most difficult position in sports. And if you think you've got a guy that can play that, you have to take him over a good defensive end. It's just not close. If you got a guy that can be your franchise quarterback, you have to go for him. You have to go for him. I agree. It's um it it's I mean, and honestly, this day and age in the in the NFL, Dave, I've thought about this recently. Um, this is a topic for another day, so I don't want to get too deep in it, but I feel like a generational quarterback is actually more valuable than a generational basketball player on an NBA team. I actually think that I think because of the rules now, like, like, okay, let's take the two best players in their respective sports, Patrick Mahomes or Nikola Jokic. You're starting a team and you got to go win a championship. You might actually take Patrick Mahomes now over Nikola Jokic, right? Oof. Let me think about that. Four downs brought to you by dynasty pools and spas. I'll have my answer in 60 seconds. You know, the best thing about Dynasty Pools and Spas is that they've got it all taken care of. What does that mean? Well, you stop by their showroom and check out their fantastic selection of top-notch spas in that showroom in Athens. Make your pick and get ready because Dynasty Pools and Spas delivers within 125 miles of that location in Athens.
Gardens, that fantastic showroom. They've got the cover, the cover lifts, steps, chemicals, and everything you need. Delivery at no extra charge. They're just down the road in Athens. You pick the spa you want, and it'll be there for you. Oftentimes discounted with military and first responders discounts. Also blemish models, or just mention Off the Hook Sports. That's Off the Hook Sports for $500 off. There's a discount for you on spas made right here in East Tennessee. Support local. Dynasty Pools and Spas also has the best chemicals for you and your spa and your pool. No fillers, just the chemicals made right here in East Tennessee. Support local. Dynasty Pools and Spas, $500 off if you mention Off the Hook Sports. $500 off if you mention Off the Hook Sports. Dynasty Pools and Spas. Dynasty Pools and Spas.com. It has happened before. Ron Vary. In 1968, and then a guy named O.J. Simpson in 1969. So it would be killer if Tennessee could get two number one picks in the NFL. (laughs) (laughs) Worst person ever. Uh, Jimmy Holmes will join us. That's why I get those jokes out of the way uh, before Jimmy Holmes joins us. Because I don't want to. You still have to answer the question, starting a team, Patrick Mahomes or Nikola Jokic. It's tough in today's game, and you never would have said that 10 years ago with NBA versus NFL. No, you wouldn't. That's that. That's fair. I. But how good is Mahomes? If Mahomes turns out to be the next Brady, then we would have to reevaluate that, right? I mean, he's easily the best player in the NFL right now, and there's not really a close second. He's taking – like, when Brady was playing, Brady always had competition from Peyton Manning, Aaron Rodgers. There's no rival of Patrick Mahomes. Have you ever seen this in the NFL where a quarterback has no rivals because he's better than all of them? Uh, no. No.